The Worlds, The Worlds Over Journal, Part 4, in the Forever Fantasy. It wasn't just a dream. These brilliant blue lights that illuminate the silent steel husk of our behemoth. A tank, a friend, a lover that we've come to know in these past 30 days in the unknown. We're trapped here in, in a silent temperance, like a steel sword on the edge of oblivion. We're lost, Charles and I, and we're lifting from a magical tomb the infusion of a power core that could become active, and maybe it will, and did it just become? All around us is the silence manifested itself. Once our minds rested in the darkness and flickered in the blue that wandered those lights in the tube, the streaming laser liquid laser that flowed from the bulkheads along the consoles and the floor to the fusion core, we began to look around to find all that's situated in a state of high remission or death without decay. We don't even know, but of all of our friends lay in heaps and crumbles sealed in their armor in the protective barrier of the fusion core. Those outside the core where we placed them, they were sealed. And they were beautiful people still, though they lay decaying. But we can't even say that that's true. But I'll name them now, those that I can remember, where our memories are coming back, though slowly. And not of the war or anything beyond anything that lies within the steel tomb. So there's Edrin and Moke. Edgar and Motron and Borean, those are the three in the protective core. And then there's Maggie, who's the husband as Linus. We're both huddled together in the ammunition crates near the bunkers in the door, the back console. Froglin and his wife, Chelsea, who are cuddled up tightly in a bunk. Keska, the wife of Motron, had Priscilla, the only child on board, wrapped tightly in her arms about the floor near the bulkhead. How I longed to be that one holding her silently in a dream because then I would be back in time. I'd be back in a world that I'd remember. Even if it was frightful when the end was near. Even if we had gone into some small conflict in the edge of war on our way to Antioch or wherever it is that we were supposed to go. Even if the command console blew up we lay motionless, waiting for some far-off magical missile to hit us. This would be better than the silent tomb that we now are inflicted within, because we're losing our minds. No matter how much I write furiously in this journal, my hands are going ghostly white, and I fear I'm becoming ethereal. Charles works every day. He's more driven than I am, even though I write and read and think and keep his hope his mind alive, he thinks, and now the core will be connected soon, or so he says, and hopefully we'll be able to open the door and escape this silent tomb, over who will you open your doors, will you let us out, to into whatever world lies beyond, the light that streams in is ending now, and so I must go, this is another short entry of Jane and the world's open, in earnest. Yes,